great aunt Marine said it, a hundred and three, write scripture on your heart so when you need it, cause anxiety hates Psalm 23, so just say to yourself, comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, verses 7 through 14. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say, Give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit at the lowest place. So when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled. And all who humble themselves will be exalted. 
He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers, your relatives or your rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind for you will be blessed because they cannot repay you for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. This is the word of life. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy Spirit breath, make the table wide. Holy Spirit breath, make the table wide. Holy Spirit breath, make the table wide. Amen. Let the table be wide. Let the welcome be wide. I love parables. I love these riddles, these stories, these weird stories that Jesus told. And I love that no matter how long it's been since I've opened a parable like this, that when I come back, there might be something new that I find. When I teach at my church that I'm a pastor at in New Jersey, we use a curriculum with the children called Godly Play, and we have little felt and figurines, and if you're thinking of the felt boards, you're almost there. We have these little boxes that we pull out called our parable boxes that are painted gold, and we say that these are gifts given to us before we were born. But before we open these parable boxes, we knock on them to see if they will open for us. Because sometimes we're not ready to enter them. Other times, we don't understand them, and we have to keep knocking, keep coming back to see what's inside. Sometimes we understand these riddles, and other times we are left more puzzled by Jesus' stories. But the goal isn't necessarily to master or to memorize these riddles, but allow them to invite us into a posture of wondering, wondering about God, God's present kingdom. So whether you've knocked on this parable a dozen times or perhaps your first time, together let's open it and see what's inside. And Jesus said to the people, all who exalt themselves will be humbled and all who humble themselves will be exalted, will be exalted. And then he said to the one who invited him, when you give a dinner party, do not invite your friends or your siblings or your relatives or your wealthy neighbors with the motivation that they may invite you in return and you will be repaid. But when you host a banquet, when you host a feast, invite the poor. Invite the hungry who have nowhere to go to eat, the homeless who have nowhere to go. Invite the disabled perhaps those without medical care, the marginalized, the oppressed, the misunderstood, the invisible, the people you don't normally socialize with, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. I just love the irony in this story. Scholars name this as the parable of the host, but in the kingdom of heaven, God is the host, and who can repay God? We are guests even in our own church, even in our own homes. And God is the great host. And even when we're putting on our hosting hats, we are really host by proxy. We are host extending God's great invitation. But we have so many more people in this story. We have the host, of course, and the host circle of friends. And we have the guests of honor these people who ought to be invited into this banquet because then you will be blessed by their presence. And as you might have picked up, these guests of honor are not kings or presidents or queens or wealthy rulers or CEOs. They're the, who the world sees as lowly, but who God favors. This certainly is not the first time that we've heard of these groups of people in scripture, these people who are important, the poor, the marginalized the lowly, the people that you don't often see. 
Because from the very beginning in the Magnificat, Mary's, Mary's song in Luke 1, she sings of this radical flipping of structures in God's kingdom. A kingdom where the rich walk away empty and the poor are filled. Where God favors the lowly and brings down the powerful. And then in Jesus' inaugural sermon, we hear again about these people. Speaking the words from Isaiah, Jesus preaches to his listeners that he brings good news to the poor, liberation for the captives and the oppressed. And unsurprisingly, not everyone liked this message. But what I find fascinating about our parable for this morning is that Jesus didn't say, go to the poor, go to the outcasts, go to those places and fix them. Go over there, give them what they need, and then come back. Write a check and call it a day. I'm certain there's a time for writing checks, but this isn't the point of this parable. No, he says, invite them to dinner. Become their friend. Save them a seat, and not just any seat, but the best seat. And this, friends, becomes the New Testament's definition of Christian hospitality. I wonder if for some of us, this fixing, this giving of money or resources is actually less painful, maybe even less vulnerable, less risky than what Jesus is asking us to do here. I wonder also if this hospitality seems different to you than entertainment. This doesn't seem like they're putting on a dinner party to give their guests something to do, but rather Jesus is inviting us to put on a banquet to make people feel welcome to make people feel at home, and perhaps not even a literal banquet, but more of a metaphorical one. We know at banquets there is food and laughter to nourish our bodies and souls, a seat for everyone to belong, just like in our story, there's always room for one more. A banquet takes preparing and cooking and inviting and setting up. It's so much different than a drive through where you get your food and they say, go take it over there and leave. Jan Richardson, who is one of my favorite authors and artists, and the artist of the um, art on your bulletin for this morning, she writes about such hospitality. And she says these words, and the table will be wide, and the welcome will be wide, and the arms will open wide to gather us in. Now, I don't think Jesus is trying to diminish the care of our families when he says, don't invite your brother, your sister, your neighbor because he says, don't invite them so that they will return the favor, check your motivations. But I think that maybe some of us in this room invite our families over for Christmas or throw a, a dinner party, not because they'll do it in return, but we do so because we love them and we care about these relationships, right? And I think that's a good thing. But what I see Jesus saying here is, don't stop there. Don't just invite the people that you like who are related to you who vote like you, who think like you, who grew up in the same place as you. But what about the most vulnerable? What about the people you don't associate with? Maybe because you don't like them, maybe not because you don't like them, but because they live different lives. Maybe they have different jobs, live in different neighborhoods. What about the people you don't see at this table? What about the people who perhaps walk through the doors of this church? who are socially, financially, physically vulnerable? What about the people that you have in your lives who are just going through a difficult season in their lives and need support? I wonder who the vulnerable are in your world. I wonder who the people in your lives that maybe you feel need to hear the words, let the table be wide, let the welcome be wide. I don't know about you, but my tiny apartment can't quite fit more than three people for dinner. So how am I supposed to live into Jesus' words? What I do know is that the spirit of this parable contains so much more abundance than just a dinner party. This is a story about God's kingdom, the reality that we are always trying to live into now. This table, this big feast that Christ speaks about is life with God. And unlike our own dinner parties at our own limited tables, everyone is invited to this table. There is always room for one more. 
But the thing is, those of us who are at this table, those of us who are host by proxy, we have the gift of extending this invitation to others. We are invited to make this circle wide, to make sure every potential guest is seen. And in some ways, perhaps this could be about inviting people to church. But I don't think it ends there. Even more than that, maybe it's about befriending the vulnerable, whoever that might be. Inviting them to break bread with you. Inviting them to sit next to you. Remembering that God, maybe through another host by proxy, once invited you into this life. Invited you into belonging. Invited you into liberation, into the fullness of life with Christ. Generous hospitality is a value that's not just a feel-good story. It's not something done easily or for show. And actually, it often goes uncelebrated, unrecognized by the world. It might not make the movie screens or the front page of the news. But Jesus says we're blessed in another way. When we recognize the dignity in others, when we extend the invitation to God's grand table, a transformation happens within us. And Jan Richardson writes about this transformation, saying, and we will open our hands to the feast without shame. And we will turn towards each other without fear. And we will give up our appetite for despair. And we will taste and know of delight. And we will become bread for a hungering world. And we will become drink for those who thirst. And the blessed will become the blessing and everywhere will be the feast. What she's saying here in this poem is not only are you invited into belonging, but you, you host by proxy, are changed when you extend this invitation to others in the world. You are made more whole because you are blessed beyond imagination. When you move beyond your limiting beliefs, when we together collectively take that risk, we might just find that this connection, this partnership, this companionship with the vulnerable is maybe what we needed too. These people who you show hospitality to are actually the guests of honor and you get to sit next to them. Your blessing might not come with money or jewels or social status, but you are blessed because you are close to those who embody God. And you just might realize that you too were vulnerable. You too once needed that invitation into belonging. You beloved guest at this heavenly feast, you are host by proxy at this liberating, loving heavenly table. I wish I could tell you that this hospitality was easy and as poetic as Jan Richardson makes it seem. I don't want us to leave here today with rose colored glasses. I know that each of us as hosts have limits. Not all of us can welcome a stranger in our homes every single evening for dinner. Not all guests need to be welcomed in the same way. It's still vulnerable, it's still hard. And unfortunately, Jesus fails to wrap this one neatly in a bow for us too. But that's why we need to keep coming back, keep knocking on this parable, keep seeing if it will open for us. And what I noticed about this parable is that I think that he's inviting us into hospitality, not just us as individuals. This hospitality certainly requires both personal but also communal commitment. It requires a whole dinner party that is willing to welcome people with welcoming arms. And so maybe you don't have room to welcome a stranger into your home, but perhaps as a small group or as a church community, you could. Perhaps you cannot meet all the needs of a person you met walking down the street, but you could invite them to church, to your small group, to dinner. I see you already living this out. This church most recently became a reconciling church, saying that everyone belongs at this table, all people of all spans of life, no matter who they are, no matter who they love, is welcome at this table. I believe that this church has knocked on this parable and has kept coming back to these words. Who will you continue to invite to this table? Not simply to fix their problems, but to become their companion, their friend. Who will you invite maybe to a literal dinner table? 
or maybe to church, maybe just into friendship, into kindness, into relationship. But let's decide not to be a kingdom host alone, shall we? Especially if this generous hospitality is vulnerable for you, as I imagine it is for many of us. I invite you to gather with your small group or your family or a couple of friends and say, let the table be wide. Let the welcome be wide. For me, the best part of this parable isn't that we are invited to be host by proxy, to love the stranger. I love that Jesus reminds us that if you want to be blessed, if you want that blessing you've been searching for, here's a great way to do it. If you really want to know about God's kingdom, if you really want to know where God is, here are the people who will teach you, not the pastors or the PhDs, but the homeless, the marginalized, the invisible, the hungry, the people in our very counties who go without. If you really want to love God, here are the people who embody God's image. And in doing so, you will be blessed beyond imagination. What an upside down kingdom. What great news. What a wide table. What a wide welcome into the open arms that gather us in. May you, beloved church, Keep knocking on this parable. Keep opening it up. Keep wrestling with this riddle. May you chase this blessing of showing generous hospitality today and let the table be wide. Amen.